SoCan is a collective management organization. We license the performing rights and the reproduction rights of music performed in Canada. And through our contracts with uh, similar organizations around the world, we allow music creators and their publishers to license the use of their music and copyrights. We represent about 150,000 songwriter and composer members and publishers uh, domestically in Canada. But through our reciprocal agreements, we represent about 4 million international creators and about 30 million songs. 20 years ago, SoCan was doing five to six million performances, tracking and, and paying out on those annually. Uh, now it's about 300 million a day. And that reflects the rise of everything from Spotify and Apple and YouTube. That's put a tremendous strain on the collective management companies like SoCan as well as publishers and other stakeholders in the industry. So we've invested a lot of money in technology, both in terms of mastering the data, which is helping to organize it before we put it into our systems, and then having a robust ERP, enterprise resource planning. Uh, essentially, it's an operating system that allows us to handle the very large volumes. These are the tools that have allowed us to adapt and grow with the evolving ecosystem. I would say the inflection point came when we saw a massive rise in the volume of music being distributed via digital platforms, Spotify, etc. When music was being played in one country, in one location, it was being tracked in a very non-digital fashion. It was in PDF documents. The volume of data that's coming through now is being tracked at a higher speed. And that presents challenges. Wonderful to have all the data. The real key is how people are managing the flow of the data and interpreting and visualizing that data, not just for ourselves internally, but for our members. A big key to what we do in the industry is driving transparency and transparency around data is what will give our members the opportunity to make the right decisions. The millions we were doing before were on an annual basis and now we're doing about 100 billion annually. The scope is tremendous and the complexity has changed dramatically. What used to be two or three participants in a song, maybe a songwriter or two and a couple of publishers, now it's quite common to see dozens of participants in a song because of sampling and collaborations. That's been exploding. The rise of technology and the processing power that's been growing exponentially has allowed us to be able to handle this. These numbers not only were unheard of 15 years ago, there's no way the industry would have been able to deal with it. But the technology's evolved, everything from cloud-based to uh, some of these large processing systems. The AI platforms can handle upwards of 700,000 Facebook pages in a second. That is a huge volume at a very high speed. That's been something that's really evolved in the last 36, 48 months. Very often, I think, when people are building teams, they focus excessively on the skill set, not at the aptitude. But what we're trying to do is to try and focus on the aptitude of people, because certainly from an analytics perspective, yes, there's a lot of qualifications you can now get, recognizing that most of those qualifications didn't exist 10 years ago. What we've tried to do is to have a data governance office, which is established as that interlocutor between the IT department and all of the departments within SOCAN, and effectively try to unpack the challenges that the business might be having and ensure that the data can match to that. The challenge that people run into is having the staff that understand the value of the data and why is that particularly important to that department. I am a big believer in the speed of business. You know, there's a speed of sound and a speed of light. And I think there's a speed of business where business needs to move at a cadence and at a rhythm. Collective rights societies have struggled with that for a variety of reasons, ranging from governance to tradition to legal structures. But I think we have to adapt and be ready to move at the speed of business. There's an expectation to move quickly. There's also increased pressure and opportunities relating to this intermediation. People looking to pull the middle players out of the uh, transactions. Collecting societies and labels and publishers and managers and accountants all have a role in this ecosystem, connecting different parts together to help ensure that the money flows and there's as few people taking as little as possible off of the flow going through it. And that is a significant challenge for a number of the large institutional elements, including the SOCANs of the world. The collective management system started really in the 1850s and most of the large players started operation early in the 20th century, including SOCAN. They were set for a world based upon certain territories and very specific copyright law. Those are evolving. A global license, a one stop to do everything is sort of the target for a lot of people, both the digital service providers and the rights holders, but it's some time away because of the complexities related to these issues. But I do see a rise in having large regional agreements, say the Americas or the European Union or Asia.
it was done manually in the early 2000s. Radio stations, which were the highest volume, were monitored on a proxy basis to survey three or four days a quarter. And they would fill out what they performed over those three or four days and send it into us. And we would use that as a proxy for distributing the royalties. Now we go down to individual single performances. Even on radio, we show complete granularity. So if someone wants to find out their song exactly when it was played, they can find out it was on a Tuesday afternoon in Saskatoon mm -hmm. from 2 to 2.04. That would have been impossible in the not so good old days. It's been challenging in so many different dimensions, both financially and emotionally, both for the artists and the creators, particularly those who rely on live performance, because that's dropped uh, dramatically. What could have been utter devastation has turned out to be a bit of a retraction, collapse in, in retail and in concerts, but surprising strength in traditional media and in digital. It's changed it immeasurably. There's a billion people entering the middle class over the next decade. Huge swaths of the globe that traditionally would not have consumed much in the way of Western music or music in general. Now they have devices. So we're seeing huge developments in Africa and in Asia uh, that are very exciting for the entire industry. They bring new challenges though, everything from language and currency, but also the need to get the information and the money back to the stakeholders. It's gonna be exciting, but it's gonna be a challenge. I don't think any industry was ready. They saw it as a phone, but not as a camera, not as a vehicle to receive and send data. It became a form of entertainment as well for people, which I don't think anybody was expecting. As a result, we've all had to adapt and evolve fairly quickly. If you look at our members, they have those devices. They're able to access information now a lot easier than having to go home and you know sign up onto their laptop or their home computer. They've got it 24 seven, wherever they are. We suddenly saw a future that was not limited by peer-to-peer -peer sharing and pirates, it was moving toward a whole new ecosystem. And it took a company like Apple to make that leap, especially in 2007 with the iPhone. I think that was a game changer. The industry wasn't ready to deal with it, but I think it's responded well. The licensing models and regimes that have evolved since generally work for everybody. Our growth is largely predicated on the growth of our members, so I think we'll have an important role that way to help them grow and succeed, both in terms of their songwriting and production, but also in terms of getting the content out there and licensing it and getting the money back. There are security elements, there's data privacy elements that need to be addressed. You know, I'm sharing my data, who am I sharing it with, and what is it worth, and what are they using it for? SOCAN is, is addressing that. The collaboration between music societies globally will probably increase, and that'll certainly help members all around the world. Yeah, it's a bright future. There's a lot of growth ahead of us. I think the future will look different than probably anything we've ever seen before.